Hello everyone, I'm Jensen. Today is Tuesday, February 16th. And of course, the big story today is all of this snow. So I'm gonna talk about that and all the stories you need to know to get in the loop today. So of course, let's start off by talking about all of this fluffy stuff. So we officially got over one foot of snow in Toledo and in rural areas, the wind has piled snow drifts up to four feet. And I'm not kidding when I say that is up to my shoulders. And fun fact, our weather team says this snow is far more than the famous blizzard of 78, but the winds were nowhere near what we had back then. And since records began at Toledo Express, this has been the third largest two-day snowstorm. Isn't that wild? And some people, well, mostly their pets, have been able to enjoy their snow day. Look at some of these photos sent in from across our area. Absolutely adorable. Here's my pup, Maya, zooming around our backyard last night. She's part husky and was thriving in this snow. Well, it's so pretty to look at and of course fun for the pups to play in. It is important to remember to stay safe out there, especially when you're out on the roads. Since midnight, AAA's roadside rescue team has received more than 245 calls for help from stranded Northwest Ohio area drivers. So as temperatures drop again tonight, AAA is reminding people that breakdowns during extreme temperatures can be dangerous, especially for the elderly and very young. So make sure you're always prepared by keeping some sort of emergency kit in your car when it's cold, filled with things like blankets, gloves, salt, a flashlight, and a first aid kit. And more snow may be actually on the way, but predictions are above my pay grade. So let's see what's ahead with our first alert weather team. Readings are in the teens right now, but with some clearing overnight, the winds going nearly calm, it is going to be a cold start to the day tomorrow. All you need are the stars overhead for a few hours tonight. And with all that fresh snowpack, low temperatures will go below zero in a hurry. And if they do, areas of fog will be possible getting the day started tomorrow uh, because the wind will be nearly calm for a number of hours. During the day tomorrow, a little light, light breeze will pick up. Temperatures should climb up pretty decently. I think highs will get to near 20 and then we'll run the clock into Thursday. And here comes the next chance of snow that I mentioned. And now all indications are this will be a light amount. It's going to come across the southeast edge of our viewing area. So the farther southeast you are, actually, the more likely you'll pick up a little light snow on Thursday, and it could overspread the area into the afternoon. So just keep that in mind heading toward Thursday. Tonight, bitterly cold. Areas of fog will be possible. We're going to go with the low temperature for Toledo, and this is at Toledo Express Airport of six degrees below zero tonight. Then tomorrow with a light, light east breeze, clouds will increase the high about 19 and on Thursday with a high of 25, there will be a chance of some light snow on a northeast breeze at 10 to 15. Friday should be a little brighter Saturday as well. Highs 18, 21 and on Sunday with a 40% chance of uh, snow or snow showers, the high should inch up to 32. Next week, I think highs will be above freezing several days in a row, and it will include even a chance of rain a week from Thursday and the possibility of at least one high temperature there, making it into the 40s. But that uh, right now, considering how cold it's going to be tonight, is a long way off. I think that's the best way to put it. So that snow we got last night, it caused a lot of local vaccine appointments to be postponed. So if you were impacted, what happens next? While most clinics have decided to keep those appointments at the same time, but just move to a different day. But some opting to try again tomorrow, but others are pushing it back until next week. So how do you know what your clinic is doing? In most cases, you should have received an email, but if you didn't, we have a list on our website with the information you need, breaking down these delays by county. And of course, I have a link in the description of this video. So check that out if you haven't already. And Ohio Governor Mike DeWine says that this winter weather is impacting shipments of the vaccine as well with some providers facing up to one to two days of delays. So the health department has already reached out to every provider in the state to let them know about these potential slowdowns so they can hopefully come up with some sort of backup plan. But on the plus side, some good news when it comes to the vaccine, scheduling and making an appointment might soon be a bit easier. Dwine said the state is developing a centralized COVID-19 vaccine scheduling website, creating a one-stop way to find an appointment in the state. So the first phase for launching the new dashboard is actually complete, meaning the site is functional. So the next phase of the site's launch will be outreach to vaccine providers to get them all signed up and ready to participate in this new scheduling system. Then finally, once enough providers have signed up, the state's third phase will be to make the site go live. 
Once it's up and running, all you have to do, if you qualify, of course, is put in your zip code and you can pull up appointments within 20 miles. And as always, if you or a loved one has trouble accessing the internet, you can always reach out to your area office on aging or the United Way's 211 number to get some help scheduling. Now let's talk about schools. Even more schools in the state are starting to head back to the classroom. For some perspective, at the start of January, 47% of the state's students were in a school that was fully remote. Now that number is less than 15%. And DeWine is crediting that shift with his effort to get teachers and school staff vaccinated. As a reminder, in order for a school to get shots for their workers, they had to sign on to an agreement promising to return to some form of in-person learning, whether full-time or hybrid, by March 1st. All public schools in the state besides one signed on to that promise. But here's where things get interesting. DeWine announced Friday that three districts in the state have already announced plans to go back on that deal after already getting the vaccine. He addressed those districts directly saying breaking that commitment would be, quote, unacceptable. Now, it's not about a commitment to me. It's not about a commitment to the state or the health department. It is really a commitment to the students. Today, DeWine again urged any school district wavering on that March 1st deadline to do everything in their power to get kids back into the classroom, citing concerns that many students struggle in a remote environment and new guidance from the CDC stating that transmission between students and school is actually rare and that as long as mitigation efforts are enforced, in-person learning is not a big driver in terms of spread. DeWine said he specifically spoke with the CEO of Cleveland Public Schools after he learned about their potential to not meet the deadline as the vaccinations were still happening in that district. And he asked if they should pause vaccinating staff until a plan was certain. Ultimately, he was promised the district would do everything in its power to return by March 1st. Now, DeWine has previously been criticized by teachers unions who say that he is using the vaccine as a bargaining chip. But in this instance, DeWine says that the suggestion to halt the vaccine isn't punitive. Rather, if the doses aren't being used to get kids back into the school, they could then be reallocated to be used for Ohio's most vulnerable citizens. And President Joe Biden is extending a ban on housing foreclosures to June 30th in an effort to help homeowners who are struggling during the pandemic. The moratorium on foreclosures of federally guaranteed mortgages was set to expire on March 31st. On his first day in office, Biden had extended it to that date from January 31st. And according to the Census Bureau, almost 12% of homeowners with mortgages have been late on their payments. Now also extended to June 30th is the enrollment window for borrowers who want to request mortgage payment forbearance, which is a pause or reduction in payments. And Biden's administration will provide up to six additional months of forbearance for borrowers who entered forbearance on or before June 30th, 2020. But these actions that were announced today failed to address a federal moratorium through March 31st on evictions of tenants who have fallen behind on rent. And before I go, let's talk about Fat Tuesday, which around these parts means it is Poonchki Day. So online right now, I have a list of some of our favorite bakeries. So you can give them a call tomorrow and see if they have any more Poonchki in stock. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you could try to make your own at home. But from personal experience, it might just be easier to let the professionals do it. Either way, I have links in the description of this video with a recipe and that list of bakeries. So whatever you choose to do with that, that is your prerogative. But that is all I have for you today. If you like this video, hit that like button. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Jensen, and now you're in the loop.